Hello and welcome to the 41st video of the Project Sovereign series. In this video, I'll continue texturing the saucer. I've come up with a fun new method for this, so let's get started. So here I am in my texture studio that I built in the last Project Sovereign video, and I am ready to start making the texture for the top of the saucer. And one of the things that I want to do first is to create the color for these panels and export that texture into Photoshop so I can start building my layers and start building the texture up. And what I did was I did some research and I found a photo of the Sovereign out in the sunlight, which is the best case scenario because sun is full spectrum. You'll get a really true color reading. So let me show that to you. So here it is, and you can see it's not a totally neutral gray. It's just a bit of a brownish tint to it, and other photos kind of confirm this. So I can render this out. I can manipulate the color as much as I please in Photoshop. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to copy all of these polygons. And yes, it did take a really long time to select these, so I did not show that process. But it's just a matter of bearing down and selecting lots of things, which I noticed is basically part of the life of a 3D artist. So just go to Editable Poly and copy this as a separate object. and Just click OK. So what I can do now is select this and put a symmetry modifier on it. There we go. And I'm going to isolate this. So now this is all that we have. Oh, it looks like I got a little something else there. It doesn't really matter though because I could just delete it. It's one of the great things about this texture studio is that nothing that I do here is destructive to the model itself. That's why I created the separate file, as you recall in the last last video. It doesn't really matter if this stuff shows up in the render. Okay. So what I want to do now is just select all the polygons. I even got the windows too, and you'll see uh, what's going on with that in just a moment. Let me create a material. So I can erase all of these. They are completely irrelevant. And just create a new standard material. And I'm just going to use, you know, just kind of my mind's eye to create the color. Again, I can adjust it as much as I want in Photoshop. The one thing that I do want to make sure of is that it's not totally neutral because there's no way to add color to it, right, if it's completely neutral. So I'm just going to kind of find that brown Again, doesn't need to be completely accurate. I can always change it later. And I will show shaded material in the viewport and assign materials to selection. So there we go. Now you'll see, I even copied the windows too. This is not going to matter because if there's any blemishes, like any edges or anything showing in the render, I can easily fix that in Photoshop, not a problem. This little error right here too, not a big deal. I can always just fix it. So I'm just going to go and isolate and go to my camera and show my save frames. So the last thing that I want to do is click on this and object properties. And I want to make sure that this is renderable because remember in the last video, I made the entire ship unrenderable and this object inherited that property. So I'm just going to make renderable. Okay. And click render. And there we go. Nice 4K texture. And the great thing about this is, just as I said in the last video, it's going to fit completely perfectly the model that I built. Looks like I forgot to get a few windows here, but that's nothing that the clone brush couldn't handle. So now I'm just going to save this in my scene assets textures folder. And I'm just going to call this saucer top plating. And just like before as a PNG, save it. And alpha channel is definitely checked. Just going to click OK. And I'll be able to edit this in Photoshop. This white background will be transparent, making my life a whole lot easier. Another thing I want to show you, and the next thing that I'm going to do on this project, is all of these fine white lines need to be created. I don't know if you remember in the last video how I made that line. I actually made a mistake because I thought it was going to be darker, but it's instead lighter than the background. So it's got this grayish 
brown, and then this white. So I'm going to make all of these. This is going to take a lot of time, but I will get it done, and I will create all of these tiles too. Again, very time consuming, so I'm not going to show the entire process, but I'll show you a little bit of how I do it, and I'll also show you applying the finished texture. So creating these white lines will be next. So now I can show you a little bit of how I create these white lines. So what I'm going to do is create a line, and I like to make sure that both initial type and drag type are corner because I don't like when it bends around. And I'll just quickly draw just like this, close the spline, and go into vertex mode, select them all, and I want to do Bezier corner. Now I can adjust these. So this will do for now, and I can also adjust these later on. So now what I want to do is just make sure that they show up in the render. So I will enable and render, enable in viewport, and rectangular. And point three. Now you'll see it looks kind of like chunky, right? Chunk, chunk, chunk. So I need to turn up the interpolation, and that's going to give it 100 steps. Make sure it's nice and curvy. And the last thing I want to do is apply my wet material to it. So now it's time to create these lines here. And this part's actually pretty simple. All I need to do, I'll just show you how I do one. So I'll put a line in, like so. And then I'll attach it. So this line I'm going to attach to this. Now it's really easy to get rid of all these, like this flashing right here. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to shut off rendering. And simply go like that and that to trim it. So now when I enable it, you see it's nice and nice and even. And that's how it's done. So yeah, just do that all around the saucer. Very tedious and time consuming, but again, very necessary and it's going to look good by the time it's finished. So now it's time to create the actual tiles that will be on the saucer top. So you can see them right here, sort of embedded into the armor plating. And they're also on the regular white parts too. So the, the usual approach that I take when I create tiling like this is I'll create a cylinder and I will basically add color to each of these tiles and I'll cut in some extra smaller tiles. And this works out pretty good, but there's a couple of things that are not great about it. First of all, as you can probably tell, it's very time consuming to create all of these kind of tiles. And also, you see, they change. They get much skinnier, right? Because the area changes the closer you get to the center. So they get really skinny, and then they get really large. So I decided to try and invent a new approach for this. And I think I found one. So let me go to my camera view. And watch what happens. Look at that. Instant tiles. Pretty cool, right? So how did I do that? I created these particle emitters. This is super spray. So it's just right here. Particle systems, and then you choose super spray. And I created these dummy tiles over here. And I set them to instances. So if I click on this, for example, you see you can pick object. So I just picked one of these tiles and it shoots it out from the sides, just like a real particle emitter. So this is great because it saves me a lot of time in placing these tiles and also it more or less randomizes everything. So I did a few, you can see, I don't know if you can see through all of it, but there's a few, I think there's three, yeah, three different emitters for three different tiles. They're all different colors. The color doesn't really matter because again, all that's going to be adjusted in Photoshop. So all I really need to do 
this again, just go to the camera view. Actually, I'm just going to my top view because I want to see the whole thing. And just play the frames out. So you see I drag the frame slider. So there's a time index here. And just make it go all the way to the edges a little bit more. And then what I can do is I can actually resize the emitters to stretch it to fit the shape of the saucer, more or less. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's okay. So now when I render it, You see, we've got this nice dispersal of tiles. Doesn't matter which way they're rotated or anything because this is just a 2D render. I'm not concerned at all about this area right here because this is going to be underneath the bridge tower. But everything out here looks pretty good. So I can adjust the color as I like. And this will also be useful in the bump map too. So I've created all of my basic elements. And I don't know if you saw, but I created this little detail here. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Maybe a sensor or something. But that's just a very basic shape pretty dull so I didn't record myself building it it's just a boring shape but that's the kind of thing that you can build when you're working in this mode so yeah so I'm going to render the armor plating these white lines and the tiles as separate elements and I'll be able to composite them in Photoshop so in the next video I'm going to show that process just creating a Photoshop document and creating all the different layers and adjusting those different layers to create the most realistic look that I can of these textures onto the model and I'm also going to map it onto the model. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you soon.